Welcome to a video about a game. If you are not familiar with Hotline Miami, nothing in this video is going to make any sense. Uh, I assume that won't be a problem because it's very popular and most people have already played the game. But if not, I just did a let's play of it to go watch that. Because this is all going to be gibberish to you otherwise. That said, this is technically not Hotline Miami. But I do assure you, this is a real game that you can actually buy on Steam, despite all evidence to the contrary that you're about to see. This is Devolver Bootleg. Oh yeah, I always meant to pick this up. Devolver Bootleg. <laughs> Devolver. Uh, Alright. Devolver. I, I need to make an uh, addition to earlier. Even if you have played Hotline Miami, Hotline Miami doesn't always make sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But this is not Hotline Miami. This is Hotline Milwaukee. You a bunch of losers. <laughs> we only have four masks to choose from in this much more slow-paced, laid-back, boring version of Hotline Miami. Donk. Yep, of course, but uh, I'm rocking that cock. <laughs> I was trying to be a cog blocker. I, I, I <laughs> thought you were gonna go with uh, Piggy, you know, with Milo Milwaukee Cops this summer. Uh. <laughs> now it turns out you can't use the pig because they've already killed it and turned it into sausage. <laughs> we're gonna be villainous enough. This is based on Hotline Miami, where you play as a white nationalist uh, domestic terrorist. <laughs> Except you don't know it for a lot of the time. Yep, they reveal it in the post-game secret ending. <laughs> yeah. God, that was Love a clusterfuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fun fact, I actually got into Hotline Miami. I bought it just to get uh, stuff for uh, Payday 2. And then oh, I, yeah. bought, I bought Hotline Miami 2 for Payday 2 stuff. And then I bought Hotline Miami 1 because the, the second was fun. <laughs> I yep. got the second one day of release. I played the, the first one uh, way back when. But the second one it was... Um... Oh boy. See, I played the first one, and that's why I didn't get the second one on day of release. I didn't buy it for years and years. Oh no, I was a huge fan of the first one. I thought it was fantastic, and then... I was too, until I got to the end. Yeah. Second uh, one is its a bit much. Wh why does the melee weapons have gun sounds? Everything has, like, one sound effect in this oh. game. It, it kind of reminds yeah. me of the mini games in No More Heroes 2. A sort of mm, um, yeah. pseudo NES vibe that they've got going. Yep. Yeah, this was slapped together by Doigsoft, which is a actual developer who made the game uh, Gato Roboto, mm. which is a pretty cool Metroidvania. But this this obviously was uh, made in their off time. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Weren't all the games in this basically? They got like half a dozen studios and had them do takes on every other everyone else's games. Uh, the only name at the beginning credits is Doinksoft, so they might have done all these, or they might have had help from other studios. I have no clue. Yeah. There's very poor documentation what, what, what? on this bootleg. Why did you come up in the bathroom from the stairs? <laughs> because shut up. <laughs> that's why. Yep. Exactly. Uh, that is the canon answer. Uh, uh, that's a shotgun. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you used a blade that shot shotgun shells. I did not see that yet. <laughs> Would not surprise me, I'm going to be fair. Also, I'm not sure if that's a turd on the street or if it's like a, a curling iron or curling stone. Could be either. We get bonus points for hitting enemies directly in the back. Um, but as you can see, there's no score display going on, so bonus <laughs> points don't matter. They matter even less than they, than they did in Hotline Miami. <laughs> Welcome to Hot My Hotline Milwaukee, where the scores don't, where nothing makes matter and the scores don't make sense. Um, <laughs> is there any stealth levels in this one? <laughs> sort of. Oh, okay, <laughs> uh, if they had just skipped that, it would win. <laughs> You're in a different house, I notice. We have continued downward. We're further in the basement <laughs> of the same building. By going up. But there's another apartment underneath the uh, previous levels. Oh god, it's Spec Ops the line all over again. 
just keep going down. But we're doing great. Oh. I played pretty much this entire game with the katana. And I <laughs> got in the third level. Was that the katana? Yep. Looks more like a really big hedge trimmer. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the dog has a baseball bat. <laughs> yeah, I love the dogs. Dogs are literally identical to humans that in is, this game. That is just precious. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's not the only game. We have all seen um, D-Dog with a, a stun knife. Yes, very true. There's a dog with a pistol. <laughs> He's got a gun! <laughs> oh, I'm thinking of that monkey uh, webcomic. Well, it's not webcomic, but like... Um... No, it's Hellboy. It's Hellboy, okay. That monkey's got a gun! Plan. <laughs> that's what that's from. Yep. Yeah, I only know the reference. Uh, from I've always seen the uh, Hades parody. Yeah, it's from uh, one of the early issues, I think. Yeah, I've, I've realized that... Um... More of the culture is meme fight. Yeah, I know, hot take. Um, than I ever realized when my daughter saw a cat in a uh, box the other day and started doing, you know, that Steve Irwin imitation. Oh, look, we have one there with the Australian accent and all that stuff. Steve Irwin was dead before she was born. <laughs> yeah. Before they were horrible. Um, yeah, so. <sighs> that, that, it's like. Do you even have an idea what you're paradising now? <laughs> <laughs> but did she try and jam her thumb up his butt up his butt out? <laughs> like six years before uh, uh, they were born, uh, Sivarwin died. Six, Jesus, he died long ago. Uh, uh, six years ago, there was a zeitgeist. Well, six years previous to anyone being born, there was a zeitgeist. You got in then, and you get to still have a popular Twitter following today. Hmm. For no reason. It sounds like you have a bitter uh, history with someone. Uh. I had to see the band Trapped show up on Twitter every so often. Uh, so, yeah. I have no idea what that <laughs> is. One hit wonder from the year 2000. Fuck them. Turned out that Twitter was not where they belonged. Rip like the band Weedus gets to have opinions <laughs> publicly. Like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I want to know what Weedus thinks of the president's tax plans. No, no, you don't. Yep. No one does. <laughs> Their family doesn't want to know what they think. I would rather listen to Tom from MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, you've been replaced. Fifteen minutes of fame lasts forever. <laughs> I mean, um, Sugar Ray had an album called 1459. Yep. Deliberately parodying that. And uh, where are and they now? Mark McGrath persists, so... Mm. Sad thing is, the early stuff's still kind of good. Not all of it, but... That uh, is a debatable. <laughs> I still listen to it in the regular, I don't care. Uh, I've been listening to VNB Nation a lot this last week, so yeah, I I'm okay with dated music. No. Or old music, not dated. <laughs> yeah, I'm the new metal defender, and I'm not gonna jump to any defense of uh, Sugar Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Swedish punk uh, is pretty much um, all 80s and uh, early 90s, so yeah. yeah. Most music I listen to it is. Uh, um, yeah, there's like three active bands right now. None of them have any members below the age of 40. <laughs> I mean, KMFDM's still going, and they're about 120 each. I've heard from fans of them that they basically have one album that they keep remaking every couple of years. <laughs> kind of... Um... Makes, reminds me of um, it was ACDC said at one point oh, that yeah. people uh, people kept accusing them of making the same album 14 times in actual fact they made the same album 15 times because one of them was a live album thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> it's like well you got me there <laughs> yeah they're Stephen King's favourite band and uh, he once responded to criticism that all their songs sound the same and he's like yeah it's a good song <laughs> <laughs> of course it all sounds the same 
Well, they did it right. Well, all my books read the same, so, you know, seem be a bit, <laughs> bit hypocritical of me to complain. Yep. And he's got that favorite band in common with Richard Ramirez. Oh, yes. Yes. Who, who, was, who was caught because he left his um, ACDC hat at a crime scene. Dumbass. It certainly didn't help. Who is Ramirez? Um, the Night Stalker, one of the most infamous serial killers, American serial killers oh, of okay. the 70s. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember I'm, I'm, I'm Night Stalker. Yeah, that one I remember, not the... Yeah. Or uh, the Screen Door Intruder was one of his other nicknames. That one yeah. never really caught on. It's really not as fitting. Too bad, because there already was a Night Stalker before yeah. him. Yeah. But he usurped. He was a, he was into so he was the Night Stalker before it was cool. Like um, in comparison, uh, uh, Sweden had a serial shooter in the early nineties. He was called the Laser Man. That's <laughs> that is so cool. That's a great <laughs> and, and now I'm going to ruin it because he was a neo-Nazi who uh, hunted uh, immigrants in uh, Malmo. Oh, so. Man. <laughs> yep. I mean, you should ruin people who are fans of uh, serial killers. <laughs> yes, <okay. laughs> you sure showed us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, he, he was called that because he used a uh, laser sight. Ah, ah yeah. Yeah, um, it's, it wasn't very creative for anyone involved. He was not even a good shooter. I mean, he killed like two people, I think. And not that I ho- was hoping it was g- going to be better, but that's the limits we're working with here. Uh... <laughs> Uh, this game's mysterious caller just hit on us, so uh, nice. It's a bit of a booty call. And really, who hasn't had one of those that wound up in bloodshed? <laughs> yep. They figured out the subtext of Hotline Miami. <laughs> Made it plain text. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's what's the Buffy quote? Uh, uh, man, Buffy, I think the subtext is rapidly Took the becoming subtext text. and made it text. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's Joss Whedon, so probably the original line said you made it all texty. <laughs> Actually, because he uh, just keeps uh, writing uh, the same script uh, over and over it's again. It's from the episode of Ted, and uh, Joss Whedon did not uh, write the episode of Ted, so... I find that surprising. And I did not look that up, I just know that offhand. <laughs> well, I'm sure someday you'll get the therapy you so richly deserve. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, yeah, um... Uh. Is this when I mentioned that my wife is a specialist uh, psychiatric nurse? <laughs> not I'm not even there. kidding. Kowski's <laughs> <laughs> wife, blink twice if you're being held against your will. <laughs> uh, well, she's the one who, who would have the access to the street jackets, not me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> not gonna touch that one. You know, they came out with the trailers for The Nevers, you know, uh, Whedon's latest show that Whedon has been removed from. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. He actually wrote the uh, and directed the first episode, but they have removed him from all advertising. <laughs> yes, that's right. Oi. Maybe this cancellation will stick. Yeah. Because we cancel him every year or two yeah, at this but point. This, I mean, I'm, I'm being of them. I like his work. I hate the person, but I like his work. And uh, this one is different because earlier he has prote- has had protection by silence from several of the bigger names. But when Sarah Michelle Geller spoke out, that was pretty much the killing blow, mm. I think, mm-hmm. because that's the protection he's had. The only big name, really, uh, names really he's worked with uh, often that hasn't spoken out has been uh, Alison Hannigan and Alexis Denisov. And I think the main reason that is because they are the godparents to his children, or his vice versa. Yeah. So. That's, that's I mean, a difficult one, yeah. Yeah. Gets awkward. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, they're literal family friends. I, I still don't say that to Kane, I say that as a fan of Alison Hannigan. But. Uh, th- I mean, if that's the only ones that doesn't mention anything. I mean, Amber Benson, Michelle Trachtenberg, they have all spoken out now. Uh, even uh, Tony Head has said that, uh, oh, I did not see it, but it's it's horrible. His um, was heartbreaking. Yeah. I mean, when you lose the old white man demographic you, in that situation, you're pretty much bone. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, the, when Michelle Trachtenberg said, you know, that it was an unofficial rule on the set to not let him be alone with her, I was just like, yikes! Yes! Uh, remember, she started uh, in season 5 when she was 14. Yeah. Mm. And, um, that's, hmm. that, yeah, that's, then there's the Elisa Dushku stuff also. Uh, yeah. Well, there was, there's been, um, it's, it's been widely known that he um, was having an affair with someone from the show. Yeah. Um, but they've never specified who it is. But Eliza Dushku is the, the most likely suspect. Yeah. Since a lot of the things that were said kind of line up with um, details about her. Yeah, especially her... Did, did you know why she didn't uh, appear in pretty much any shows between uh, season uh, 4 of Buffy slash 1 of Angel and season 4 slash 7 of Angel and Buffy? Do you know why she um, She was in no was, television? Um, I know that she had to take a long hiatus for a while, or at least the story was, that uh, rehab, um, she had to get her vocal cords. Uh, um, rehab connected with mental breakdown from what... Uh, People ah. within uh, the, that circle have said, mm. and um, yeah, there's been suspicions. And um, yeah. what I really hate is the people who have implied that that's the only reason she got like uh, the dollhouse role or the because she's a really good actress. As an apology, you mean? No, uh, it's like because you know she was his favorite, and uh, um, like. That's how she got those jobs, uh, so he would have access to her, and that's I, I, that's <clears throat> that's pretty much cruel to her because, as I mentioned, she's a really good actress. Um, Dollhouse had issues. Elisa Dushku was not those issues. <laughs> yeah. Is there like a Buffy the Vampire Slayer video game that you guys could? <laughs> <get on? laughs> oh, easy. <laughs> Yeah, there is actually. I have I've gotten it to work with my computer, Chaos Bleed. But um... yeah, damn. <laughs> okay, so we're being uh, told to kill by a caco demon now. Yep. Turns out Satan was pulling the strings. Oh dang! Still more sympathetic than Hotline Miami. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, in Hotline Miami, it was fucking janitors. Why? Why was it janitors? <laughs> because they were cleaners. I, I, I mean, that's the pun, right? No one ever pays attention to the janitors. Yeah, that was actually it. They infiltrated the uh, mafia base of operations by being janitors. Yeah, that, yeah. that was what I always kind of figured. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I, thi I think that. Um, I'm, what, what, what I thought, but that, yeah, that's pretty much only my, you know, headcan or whatever you want to call it, but I would have thought that when they designed it, they put called them janitors because reference to, you know, cleaners, hitman, cleaners, and then uh, janitors, um, and then pretty much they build a mythos around that, because that, that, it feels like a game that was pretty much a game they, the mythos was created after the game. Mm. Oh yeah, you're 100% yeah. correct there. Um, the level where they are introduced, the janitor characters are introduced, is called Clean Hit. Yeah. As a reference to them. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the fact that they are janitors is the most surreal thing about the first game. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you sure that's the most surreal thing about the game? Not, you know, the, the, the two completely different timelines where uh, Biker and Jacket kill each other? Yeah, well, that's uh, unreliable narrators, though. <laughs> Both characters were lying is the only reason that happened. <laughs> I remember the new King of the West Coast. I mean, in real life. There was <laughs> the bit in the second game where you... It's like a bonus level where you can get an interview with Biker, <laughs> who is completely fucked up, and basically the impression I got was that Jacket's version of events happened, but Biker's didn't. Yeah, well, uh, they both did happen, but uh, um, Biker survived the encounter. Yeah. Um, against all odds. He did have his head smashed in, but he survived. <laughs> Repeatedly. Yep. But <laughs> it's, it's... Damn it. Trying, it. It's trying really hard to be David Lynchian. Oh, um, yeah. They love David Lynch. Yeah. By their own admission. Yeah. Like, if you don't see that, then I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong with you. Um, watch some more movies. Yeah, it doesn't suit the storytelling at all either, because they're telling like a generic 80s action film story. 
Yeah. But they told it like David fucking Lynch. <laughs> <laughs> um, I must ask, you're not that good at bullet hell games, are you? Uh, not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't put in and out though, uh, the controls in this game are poor, like not enough to excuse how bad I am, but they're fairly uh, difficult to control. Yeah. The movement is very, very precise, it's very twitchy, and uh, if you attack with your weapon, you have to stand still for a couple of frames. So doing any damage or picking up any weapons causes you to be very vulnerable for a little while. Um, exactly everything that Hotline Miami wasn't. Yes, precisely. <laughs> this is basically like, oh, you had a complaint about Hotline Miami? Well, fuck you, play this game. <laughs> <laughs> play this game, you'll be sorry you ever said anything. Yep. Well, the dogs are less annoying here. I hate the dogs in Hotline Miami. I hate the dogs in pretty much every game, but... Very heat-seeking missiles. Actually, I, that's a very common complaint. I didn't mind the dogs too bad in Hotline Miami, but uh, I see where you're coming but, from. But also, as I mentioned, I hate dogs in pretty much every game. Every, pretty much every game the dogs are in, I hate them. I like yeah. dogs, but not in video games. Except D-Dog. I think the difference is you can pet D-Dog and you can't pet the, the dogs in Hotline Miami. No, for, for me, it's he has a stun knife. I mean, it's so absurd I can't just not lo uh, love it. It's like uh, the D horse, which has an uh, even Dorse. worse name. You can po have poop on command. I mean, <laughs> you can't be more Kojima than that. Yeah. He must be absolutely hating the fact that he didn't think of the shrinking horse testicles thing from Red Dead Redemption 2. Yep. He blew it. <laughs> Just like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Uh, this boss fight is the only part that I edited out some deaths. I cut out about a minute and a half worth of deaths here. Because <laughs> this is fairly like, difficult. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the, the fat guys from Hotline Miami, but worse. Yep. It's just one that takes about 24 hits. <laughs> yeah. And you still die in one hit. Yep. Yeah, and uh, he doesn't have reload or... Yeah, he just fires continuously. But it's a big climactic showdown with the devil. As it turns out, is the uh, the final enemy. And if we oh. pay attention to his dialogue, he called us a psychotic murderer and all that business. He's uh, mocking us for playing the game the way the janitors did in Hotline Miami. <laughs> You like giving people owies, don't you? Yep. <laughs> or maybe I have been dead and all sorry along. The, <laughs> bam, ba, bam, the, bam. the music is better in Hotline Miami. <laughs> it is better than Hotline Miami, yes. No, in Hot, I like the music in Hotline Miami. I'm a weirdo, okay, I know, yeah. but it, it's, it's, uh, I have an ambience, ambience uh, uh, soundtrack with a lot of video game music, and that's part of it, actually. Yeah, I thought you were being very sarcastic because Highlight Miami's music is phenomenal <laughs> and this game's music is quite bad. Yeah, okay. I, I, I know there's people who find uh, Hotline Miami's music to be too repetitive and therefore annoying, um, but I think that's the same people who um, get stuck somewhere and have to listen to the same thing like for hours. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh no, some of the stages in the second game I wind up having to turn the sound off just because I can't get <laughs> I was yeah. in, like, one stage for, like, three hours. Yeah. And speaking of annoying sounds, animal sounds for when you select each mask. <laughs> the donkey that says, sounds... oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that sounds nothing like a donkey. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to show that off. They should have gone with the Donkey Kong sound. <laughs> <laughs> because why is he named Donkey? <laughs> yeah, I know, webcomic uh, material here. Uh, donkey! <laughs> That might be copyrighted, although there is uh, Ape Out Jr. in the Devolver bootleg, and uh, that is a Donkey Kong parody game. It's not actually a parody of Ape Out, for some reason. <laughs> oh, wow. Of course, it would make sense. So yeah, that's the bootleg. Um, I really enjoy that the writing takes the piss out of the writing in uh, Hotline Miami. Just highlights all the ways that the Hotline Miami writing is shit. 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> does the meta fourth wall breaking, does the try to judge the players for playing a violent game, and does the pretentious, uh, does it even matter, was it all a dream? <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. Even as bad as the game design is. Yeah, it's like, um, I mean, sure, it's 20 minutes of a game, but do you really need more? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's exactly as long as it needs to be. It's everything it needs <laughs> to be, and slightly less. And then they bring out Hotline Milwaukee 2, which goes on, which is a playtime of about 18 hours. <laughs> we can only hope. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't plan to play Hotline Miami 2, because uh, it's a fun game, and also it's an agonizingly unfun game. Yeah, it's it's Hotline Miami, the ROM hack. Yeah. Um, unpopular opinion, I like it. Like, more than the first one. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I also enjoy it, but it pisses me off so bad. I like the first two thirds, but then the difficulty ramps up to a point where it can just eat a dick. Mm -hmm. Precisely the level dead ahead is where the turning point is for me, where I'm no it's longer enjoying the... the difficulty. Wait, which is that one, one is of the that? army levels? That is uh, the Detective Pardo level, where he mm. goes into a like oh, shipyard or one. something. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, the boat, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, one of the Vietnam levels or Hawaii levels, I should say. Which yeah. I got to that point. I think it's the, the first one where you get the flamethrower or the sniper yeah in rifle. the um, village. <laughs> yeah, and I was just yeah. like, no, nope, I am okay, not having I, fun I, anymore. I'm getting Vietnam flashbacks in the wrong way here. <laughs> and uh, re regard regarding that ahead, I'm going to say that that's still the worst thing that ever happened on a container ship, hmm. <laughs> including the last few days. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing that happened with the container ship. <laughs> he drew uh, a deck and then crashed. What a hero. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they should solve it the Simpsons way. Just send more ships into it and uh, unclog it. <laughs> <laughs> this will make no sense to future viewers of this video. Oh well. And wave after wave of Chinese needle snakes. I mean, I think it will. Even if you'll take like three weeks to release it, the ship will probably still be there. And if you take like a year, we will still suffer from the consequences from that one. <laughs> yeah, we can only as hope as that uh, yeah. all <laughs> coppers ends forever because of this ship. <laughs> What is it? The guy's already um, responsible for five billion dollars worth of lost trade or something ridiculous. Yeah, it's like a fifth or something of all trade in the world who goes uh, sh uh, like shipping that, trade yeah. or something goes through there. So that was a amusing curiosity. I hope um, <laughs> maybe someday we'll play Hotline Miami too with these co-commentating knuckleheads to talk about <laughs> fucking the, the Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> it was your Sweden, not Buffy this time. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> See you around. <laughs> Bye.